If you like the Jobaba London system, you're really going to enjoy the game we have today from Hikaru Nakamura. His opponent is Alexander Shimanov. This was played on chess.com May 3rd, 2023, and it is a very fast game. Three minutes for each side, yet there's a lot to be learned from it. A really well-played game. Hikaru has the white pieces. Shimanov has black. Let's jump right in. Hikaru begins with knight to f3. He's been doing that uh, recently. Knight f6, d4, and g6. A move by black indicating that he probably wants to play either the king's Indian or the Grunfeld defense. And knight to c3. This is a key move in the London system, or the, well, Jobaba London system, where you play to control this square, but you block the c pawn. d5 is played and bishop to f4. Now, the eagle eyed among you will notice that this is technically not a Jobaba London system. It is a berry attack. The only difference is that this knight on c3 has been developed from g1. Now, a Jobaba London system would get, be gotten into some, similar to this way, bishop f4, bishop g7, e3, castles. Now, in this position, white still has some flexibility with the f-pawn, but at any point, white could just choose to play knight to f3. So basically, from a structural perspective, this game is completely applicable to Jobaba London players, and there's a lot to be learned here. c6 was played by black, creating a Slav structure. This, the idea of a Slav structure combined with a fine keto is known as the Schlechter Slav. E3, bishop g7, and now h4, a common idea. Obviously, the threat is to play h5. He wants to open up the h file for his rook at h1. Queen to b6, again, a common development, particularly in this Slav structure, immediately aiming at the b2 pawn. And Hikaru plays a3, also a common response. Uh, is a little trick, right? If black takes the pawn on b2, then knight to a4. And you, you'll notice the queen is actually completely trapped on b2. It has no squares to go to. So a3 actually indirectly protects the b2 pawn. Bishop to g4 is played, pinning the knight on f3. And here, bishop to e2 is a novelty. Um, bishop to d3 was played before. And actually, this position has only been reached one time. And the black pieces were actually handled by Alareza Ferruja in that game. If you're actually interested in seeing me go over that game from Alareza, where he played the black side of this position, uh, say so in the comments section, and we'll take a look at it. Uh, but bishop to e2 is actually a novelty, although a natural move. Knight b to d7. And here, Hikaru makes a very interesting decision. He actually castles kingside. And it's strange because the original idea was to leave the rook on h1 and gain some force behind the h-pawn. Now kind of just creates a weakness on g4. The idea is he might go into to e5 with his knight. My, re, my guessing is, is that his reasoning is that black had not castled yet, and he just decided to go ahead and commit his king. He knew he wasn't going to get an easy attack on the king. Bishop takes f3, chopping the knight, but giving white the two bishops, but the knight can't jump into e5. Bishop takes f3, castles, and here Nakamura plays b4. He's going to play on the queen side for the moment. The knight can go to a4. Perhaps later the pawn can go to c4, and he can open up lines there. Rook f to e8. Black prepares to play e5, his primary pawn break in this structure. Now knight to a4. And hits the queen with tempo, so the queen moves to d8. And now knight to c5. Aiming at this b7 pawn. Uh, perhaps it was the best idea for black to go ahead and just take that knight, or maybe even move the queen to c8. But instead, he plays b6, and that creates a weakening in this structure, particularly on c6 in these light squares. And you may say, well, how in the world is white going to get at that pawn? Well, <laughs> watch and see. <laughs> he is able to use that weakness. Knight takes d7, and black would love to take with the knight and continue to support the e5 push. But now we see the problem with playing b6. White would respond with c4 gaining space on the queen side, and if black takes, then boom, bishop takes c6, a pawn weakened by the b6 advance. And if the rook moved, the rook would just be trapped, and white would, we, would be winning in that position. And because of that, black has to take the knight with the queen instead. So b6 is already creating some awkward uh, issues for the black pieces. Queen to e2 to support the c4 push. So b5 clamps down on that c4 square. A4, 
threatening to open up the a file, a6, now bishop to e5, trying to neutralize this dark squared bishop. It's not very active at the moment, but it could become active later. Queen to b7, and now rook to a2. The idea is pretty obvious. Rook f to a1, doubling on the a file and creating all kinds of pressure behind this a pawn. Knight to d7, bishops are exchanged, and uh, the next move for white that Ikaru plays is very instructional. You'll notice Black's king uh, doesn't have a lot of pieces defending it anymore. So what is the main pawn break for white in this position? I mean, he's going to build up on the queen side. He's got this move h5, but where should he break? Ikaru plays the move e4, a very, very strong move from white, continuing again to put pressure down this diagonal that has been softened up and also opening up the position for his queen to become more active in the center. e6 is played, now h5. The knight goes to b6, aiming at this very weak c4 square, and that's a beautiful square for a knight. The only question is, is that knight getting too far away from this increasingly lonely-looking king on g7? We'll wait. We'll, we'll have to see. Queen to e3 is played by white. Obviously, he knows that if the knight lands on c4, it'll threaten the queen. He just plans to move it probably to f4 to enter in the dark squares on the king side. Queen to e7, trying to combat this queen, but also it attacks the b4 pawn. Karu takes on b5. Pawn takes. Now he doubles. And here, black probably should have just taken on a2 and then jumped into c4 with his knight. That's the com computer recommendation. It's sort of clean, keeps things simple. But instead, black plays rook to a4. Mikaru takes, now knight to a4. And this knight, again, is getting further and further offside. c3 is played by Hikaru, and now rook to a8. Now here, the computer had a really strong move to help black sort of survive this position. A really powerful idea, hard for a human being to see. And that's the move f5, locking things up and uh, making it really hard for white to make any progress in the position. But rook to a8 was played by Shimanov. On takes, a very powerful idea. Uh, it forces a weakness and then the winning of material. First of all, black cannot take with the e pawn, obviously, because there's a pin. He would lose his queen. So he's forced to take with the c pawn. Now that creates a weakness at b5, but it also creates a tactical possibility for white. Can you see how Nakamura can win a pawn in this position? That's right. Bishop takes d5. The pawn cannot capture the bishop because the queen would hang. Additionally, the queen attacks the rook on a8. So black is going to have to do something about that. He moves the rook to c8, aiming at the c3 pawn in combination with the knight at a4. h6 check. King to g8. Now, Hikaru has the potential to really go after this king sitting on g8. And his next move, c4 undermines the knight on a4. And again, this, this bishop can just sit on d5 for the moment because the pin is still on the board. And now again, this knight on a4 is threatened to be undermined, so he moves it, knight to b6, hitting c4, and hitting the bishop. Now, here comes a very strong two-move sequence for Nakamura. Take a look at the position and see if you can figure it out. It's pretty advanced. That's right, he plays the move first queen to e5, which threatens checkmate in one move. Of course, he knows his, his opponent won't allow that. Uh, and he can't play f6 to stop the mate, because then, then just queen e6 check, queen takes, bishop takes, and it's a double attack, king and rook. When the king moves, bishop takes c8, and that would be it. So the only real way to stop mate here is to play queen to f8 and put the queen in a passive position defending the g7 pawn. That's the first move of the two-move sequence. Now do you see the second move? Bishop takes e6. A very powerful idea. If the pawn recaptures the bishop, then queen takes e6 check, and that's a double attack on the king and the knight. When the queen blocks, queen takes b6, and this would be a mop-up job for the white pieces. So Grandmaster Shimanov tries to stave off all of that trouble by playing rook to e8, count, pinning the bishop at e6, sort of counterpinning the, the, the piece and hoping to survive that way. 
But now queen takes b5. It's played by Nakamura. Rook takes e6. So this knight is under threat, but the rook defends it. So the question is, how can Nakamura kick this rook away so the knight on b6 isn't defended anymore? Well, first he plays d5. And the rook only has one square it can really go to to save the piece, and that's f6. But now he plays d6, interfering between the rook and the knight on b6. If rook takes d6, then just c5 forks the rook and the knight, and it's an easy win with these queenside pawns. Uh, so instead, Shimonov plays queen takes d6. Now, the next move is the final move of the game. Can you see this? Another basic but tricky tactic. That's right, Hikaru plays queen takes knight. <laughs> he just takes the hanging knight. And Shimonov resigned because he cannot retake because of rook to a8, check, and it's mate. He can only block it once with the queen. And it's a back rank mate because this pawn at h6 controls the g7 square. A very instructive game for people who play the Jobaba London or the Barry attack particularly when your opponent doesn't allow you a direct attack on their king very easily, and you have to find play in other places on the board. Now, even after going over this great game from Hikaru Nakamura, there are still some great chess you're missing out on. To fix that problem, believe it or not, the key game you're going to want to watch is in this video right here, so be sure to check that one out next. See you again soon. Bye.